Ready to set up your Z probe on your Prover XL 4030? Then stick around because that's what we're doing in this episode. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. Now in today's episode we're talking about setting up your Z probe. Now I was going to do one video for both the 4030 and the 3018 Pro, but there are some differences between them so I've kept them separate. This is the video for the Prover XL 4030. If you're after the one for the 3018 Pro, check the link in the top corner. So you can either purchase a Z probe, one may come with your machine as it does with the Prover XL, or you can build one from a few simple components because they are relatively easy devices to assemble. Now the purpose of them is to find the surface of your material or even the surface of your bed depending on how you're working. And we're talking to quite precise measurements here, a tenth of a millimetre, even a hundredth of a millimetre. It's really up to you how accurate you want to make them. But before we start setting the Z probe up, let's take a quick look at how they actually work so you can understand more about them. So the setup for this is relatively simple. The other end of the cable is connected to your control board and what it's trying to do is create a circuit between these two points. And once it knows that circuit has happened, it will then do a quick calculation. So the way it works is it will lower the spindle down very slowly and it will touch the top of that plate. At this point it will remember the coordinates of the exact position that this is in. It will then add on the thickness of your plate. For ease, let's say that's 20 mil. It will then know that that coordinate that it remembered plus 20 mil will equal the exact surface of your material once it's been removed out of the way. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because the thickness of that is usually the most important part of getting this accurate. The more accurate you can be with measuring the thickness of that, the better results you will have in ensuring your bit sits exactly on the top of your material. So what we're going to do now is get everything wired up, connect it correctly, then move over to the PC and input all the settings that are required. Now there are two popular pieces of software for running these machines. One is called Candle, the other is called UGS or Universal G-Code Sender. Now personally I prefer UGS but I know a lot of you out there also use Candle. So what we're going to do is run through the setup for both pieces of software separately. We're going to start with Candle then we'll move on to UGS. At the point that we move over to the computer I'll put a little timestamp on screen just to show where the UGS section starts. But for now let's move on and get everything connected up correctly. What you'll want to do now is use a set of calipers to measure the depth of the base itself. What's really important is that the metal plate must be sticking up higher than the plastic base otherwise you'll get a false reading. If it's not sticking up higher make sure that you push it through from the underneath and then perhaps put a dab of glue in just to hold it in place. So we'll take the measurement 20.86 Eight, seven millimeters. We'll make a note of that reading as that's the, what we'll need to input to the software shortly. So don't worry if you don't have a set of calipers, we've got a bit of a cheat method to try and get the measurement that we're after. What you want to do is lower down your z-axis and slacken off the collet so that the bit can be moved up and down. Pull the bit all the way down until it touches the bed and then just tighten the collet up a little bit. You can just do it with your fingers, it doesn't need to be tightened with the spanners. Now we measure this with a ruler and we know it's roughly just over 20 millimetres. So what we're going to do is come over to UGS and what we'll click is reset zero. And what we'll see down the bottom is that's just gone to zero. What this now means is every time that we raise the z-axis up it will give us a measurement. So we'll start by raising it up 20 millimetres. If we try sliding the plate underneath it should just about catch. So we know we're not quite there yet, but what we'll do now is raise it up by one tenth of a millimetre each time, so 0.1 millimetres. So we raise it up a little bit, try going under, and now it's catching on the metal. So we'll keep taking it up bit by bit until we can slide it underneath. Not quite there yet, a little bit more. There we are, that's just about scraping underneath now. Probably a fraction too tight, but as you can see on screen, 20.70 millimeters. Now the measurement that we got off the calipers was 20.86. So the reality is they're not that far off each other. 
So to begin with, you'll want to remove the Z probe connector from the back of the control box. You'll then also need a terminal screwdriver. Make sure the screws have been slackened off so that you can see the slight holes in between each slot. Now it doesn't matter which wire goes in which hole for this type of circuit, so just insert them into the holes, make sure they're in there, and then tighten up the screws. Once they've tightened, make sure that they can't be pulled back out and that everything is secure. Connect the Z probe to the back of the control box and make sure that it clicks into place. Next you'll want to clamp down a scrap piece of wood onto the bed and the bit that we're going to be using today is a 1 8 flat end mill or a 3.175 flat end mill. Now you can use other bits but the test code that I've specifically designed for this tutorial, that was the bit I used for the settings. Now you want to place your plate underneath the bit, try and get it as central as possible and clip the alligator clip onto the bit itself. You want to have a little bit of a gap between the plate and the bit, a couple of millimetres but certainly no more than about 10 millimetres. So now we move over to the computer. As mentioned earlier, the time is on screen if you want to skip ahead to doing this with UGS, as we'll be starting with Candle to begin with. So we'll come down and open Candle up. Now you should be familiar with this layout already. If you're not, I suggest following the link in the top right hand corner to setting your machine up with Candle. First we'll come up to Service and then open the Settings menu. This is where we can input the relevant command to be able to run Z probe. You should see this option here that says probe commands. Now I've already got the relevant code saved in a notepad file which we'll copy and paste over. I'll also provide all this information in the description below. So we're going to copy this first line, control C, bring it over to candle and paste it in this first line here. Now as you can see there's a few question marks in this code. This is where we put our measurement. So we're going to delete that out and type in our measurement which was 20.86. Now obviously you can be as accurate as you want whether you want to do tenths of a millimetre, hundredths of a millimetre or even just two a millimetre. But obviously the more precise you can be the better results you're going to get. Now what this code essentially does is tells the machine to lower the bit down by no more than 20 mil until it makes a connection, at which point it will subtract the measurement that we just put in from the known coordinates and then it will have basically the zero point or the top of your surface. The final command is just to retract the bit by 5mm just so it's a clearance space in order for us to pull the Z probe back out. Now we're going to do one other thing while we're in this menu and this is just to put in a custom command button. If you're using candle 1.2b you don't need to do this but if you're using the version that is typically supplied with all the machines which is 1.17 then I suggest you do this. If you're not sure what version you're using then it's just better to do this to begin with anyway. So what I'm going to do is open the notepad file back up and just copy this tiny little bit of code. And this is just as a safety test to run after we've actually done the Z probe command. So we'll come back in here, we're just going to scroll down slightly and we're going to replace G0 under this button 1 function with the new code that I've just copied. So we'll paste that in and one final thing to do, scroll down a little bit further just to make sure that the user command buttons are showing so we're going to tick this and then click OK. And you'll now see that we've just had this new command box appear here and the code that we've loaded in will basically be button 1. Now at this point I'm going to turn the machine on so you may hear the fans kicking in the background. And the first thing that we need to do obviously is always unlock the machine. So we'll do that now by clicking at the unlock button. Now to run the Z probe command it is this magnifying glass with the down arrow. So what we'll actually do first is set the X and Y just so we know that that is the position we want the bit to remain in. And then we will run the Z probe command. As you can see it is lowering it down very slowly. It touched the plate and that means it's finished the command and then it's raised it back up by the 5mm that we just mentioned earlier. So what we can actually do now is remove the Z probe out of the way. And that custom button that we've created basically just sends the bit back to 0, 0, 0 or the start position which it would typically be. So if we click this now, it should lower the bit down and perfectly touch the top of the material. 
and that is the basics for setting up your Z probe. You should be able to look at the bottom of the tip and not see any gap underneath it. You should also see that there hasn't been any pressure applied to the Z axis. Now, if it is one way or the other, you may need to adjust your measurements slightly to either take a little bit less off or add a little bit more on just to get it precise. But what we're gonna do is run a quick test now. So we're gonna go file, open, head into the folder that I'll supply and open up the pocket 40 mil wide, one mil deep. And as in the title, this basically is just going to cut a little pocket that is one mil deep and 40 mil wide. It will take a couple of passes. I've set the settings quite slow just to be safe, but what we can simply do now is come over to the send box and let this option run. So with the job complete, that pocket should be exactly one mil deep. We'll click OK, move the head out of the way a little bit. And just try and take a quick measurement and see exactly how deep it is. So although that's not exactly one millimetre, it's as accurate as I would expect this machine to be and I'm pretty happy with it. If yours isn't one millimetre or within your tolerance, then you can adjust some of your travel settings within your GRBL setup. But for now, let's move over to UGS and do the same procedure over there. Now if you were just interested in doing the candle setup, I've put the time on screen so you can skip ahead to the end of the video for the final comments and extra tips about using the Z-Probe. But for now let's do the same setup with UGS. So we'll open up UGS. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up the probe menu in order to input the settings. So if we come up to window and then down to plugins and we can open up the probe module. This just loads in an extra tab down here where we can put all the relevant settings in to control our Z probe. The first thing you'll want to do is come to the settings tab on the left hand side. We can leave these this as millimeters and G54. For ease, we're also just going to leave the end mil diameter as 10 mil. Now the difference between UGS and Candle is that UGS basically does a double measurement. What it does is it lowers the Z axis quite fast to begin with to find the probe, retracts it back a little bit and then lowers it very slowly to get the final measurement. And this just means it's a little bit more accurate than the way Candle does it. But it does mean we have to input extra settings for this. So we have a fast find rate and a slow find rate. The fast find rate is obviously the initial speed it will lower it down, so this is 100 millimeters per minute. And then the slow measure is 10 millimeters per minute. So make sure you input both of these measurements as they are needed. The retract amount is the amount we want the Z axis to raise back up after the first contact with the plate. So this is one millimeter. Now you can make this a higher number, but please bear in mind the higher you make this number, the slower it will take for the Z probe process to actually work. Once we've put these settings in, we need to come over to the Z axis, the Z probe menu, sorry, on the left hand side. Now, as you can see, the probe module can do X, Y, and Z probing, but for the purpose of this, we're just going to stick with doing the Z probe for now. It's fairly obvious that the touch plate thickness is basically the measurement we took earlier, so we're going to highlight this and type over with 20.86. And then the probe distance direction is basically the maximum amount of travel we want it to do in order to find the plate. So we'll set this to minus 20, the same as we did in candle. What we'll do now is just turn the machine back on and get this connected. And as always, we can see it's connected correctly because all of our jog controls come back to life. So we'll just quickly unlock this. And as we did earlier in candle, we're going to reset the zero just so we know that's the coordinates that we want it to start in. And then we're going to run the initiate probe command. And what you should see is the Z axis lower down once, touch the plate, come back up slightly and then lower down a little bit slower until it touches the plate a second time. And then finally retract completing the process. Now, say it does take a little bit longer doing the double touch process, but it does give a more accurate outcome. And we're going to do it exactly the same now. We're going to remove the Z probe out of place. 
and then we're going to click return to zero and this should lower the bit down and touch the top of the wood exactly and finally we'll run the same test code just to make sure that everything is okay load this in as you can see exactly the same a 40 mil strip and we'll just click play again and we'll move the head out of the way again and again just quickly test the depth in theory they should be exactly the same So it really is that easy to set your Z probe up. It doesn't matter if it's UGS, Candle, or any other software. You just need to know the settings to input or the string of code to get it all running. Now there are two common problems when people are setting up the Z probe. Either the tip doesn't quite touch the material or it goes too far and puts pressure on the material. The answer is quite simple, just adjust your measurement until you get the correct level that you're after. If it's not quite touching the material, Increase your measurement slowly until it does and just keep running the Z probe function. Vice versa, if it's placing too much pressure on the material and marking it, bring that measurement down until it's just touching the top of your material perfect. Now, I do use a Z probe on every single job that I do, but it really comes into play when you're doing a job where you have to change the bits over, such as doing a roughing cut and then a detail cut. It just guarantees that you get that perfect height every time, makes our end products look better, and makes our life even easier to use these machines. Now, I really hope you found today's episode useful. As always, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, and leave any comments and questions below. I always do my best to answer everyone and chat to everyone. If you want to support the channel, please follow the Patreon and PayPal links below. But that is everything for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.